Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB specialist mobile application tester. We are in chapter 3 talking about test types and test process for the mobile applications and continuing ahead with the 3.1 common test types which are applicable for the mobile application testing and in this tutorial we'll be talking about few of them again as there are many of them so we'll be talking about stress we'll be talking about security we'll be talking about performance testing to get started the very first thing we are talking about is this stress testing which is obviously important for any mobile app to be tested on a mobile device now when it comes to stress testing you do certainly know about a basic understanding of stress which comes from as a part of the performance testing now performance testing is basically to test the stability and response time and throughput and a lot many other factors like that by conducting several types of performance testing and one of that type is of course your stress testing where you try to see the optimum utilization of certain resources within the device and see the behavior of the app at that point of time will it still be stable will it able will be uh, you know user will be allowed to perform those activities which the app generally offers and if there are any kind of abrupt behaviors by the app now stress testing is focused on determining the performance efficiency of the application when subjected to conditions beyond the normal load now the stress test is this context is targeted only at the mobile devices. So some of the test conditions that can be considered for stress testing using the input hardware software of these mobile devices where the app will be installed include testing the high CPU usage, trying to generate that particular stress on the CPU utilization and see that by having 80% of utilization, does the system respond saying that, okay, these apps are not no longer allowed to be accessed or you cannot use it. Out of memory, when you run out of memory or low disk space, does certain app uh, revert you back saying that, okay, this can crash your application or get stuck while using it just due to low on memory. Coming to low disk space, the low out of memory basically goes from the RAM, which is from the memory leakage point of view, that where the general memory which is utilized during the launch or usage of the application is not released once the application is closed. And low disk space goes with your internal storage capacity. If you run out of the memory, will you be able to run such apps because it still needs certain space to operate. Battery stress when you are working on low battery usage, which is like, you know, less than 10%, and you see your phone is getting heated up, or probably the app is not responsive, you try to test that as well. Coming to the failures, which could be just like a failure of certain things, for example, the components not responding at some point of time, or the app itself not responding due to unavailability of the resources. Poor bandwidth of the internet connectivity, which could also lead into the crash of the application, or uh, probably like you know getting you stuck on a particular page not loading the next page or not giving you an appropriate message which reflects that what is the issue all about and also very high number of user interactions which in real time can also be simulated to see what happens if there are many users using the app at the same point of time does the system stand by the mobile app stays there or it crashes or increases the response time highly you know beyond the limits now some of these stressful conditions can be created using such uh, tools like monkey so monkey is one of the tool which can use uh, which can be used for performance testing on mobile apps and this is a command line tool that runs over the adb shell command command line if possible manually example by using the big files or other apps with high cpu usage or memory consumption so that principle completely applies as per the performance testing concepts and if you know about performance testing does the same thing here happen that is with help of the monkey as a performance or stress testing too Adding more to it, the next one we're talking about is security testing, where security is equally important to be tested on the apps. And especially if you're talking about the banking applications, uh, security need to be taken into account. Not only the banking application. Today, we do have gambling games available for playing online and making a lot of money. I know people are becoming rich because of that. But yes, of course, uh, we want to make sure that no matter what sort of app you're using, we want to give that security to our end users in order to make sure that 
they have the convenience and freedom of using and securing the data while they're using. So of course, your personal details are on high priority for us. And when we create an app and you are in, inform, you know, you're sharing your information there, which could be discreet. So we just don't want uh, anyone else to penetrate into that, anyone else to hack your information or hack your account itself. And we want to conduct the security testing for that reason. Now, since security testing is a complex topic altogether, we do have a separate specialist certification on that, which is called a security tester. And if you are interested, you can certainly look forward to that as well if you come from a security tester background. But we are now talking just from the point of security testing, the mobile application, which equally requires a skill set of security testing skills. Now, what else? So principal security issues for mobile apps include the access to sensitive data on the device, unencrypted information transfer or usage storage, where well, some of the test conditions that can be considered for security testing here includes testing inputs for code injection and overflow, encryption of transferred data, encryption of locally stored data, deleting of temporary data after use or after an abnormal end, and clearing text in the password fields. Now, top 10 mobile-related vulnerabilities from the Open Web Application Security Project should also be explored at any point of time. We have a OWAP kind of scenario where you generally have the list of all the security vulnerabilities, which an app should generally be tested for. And there are standards like, you know, uh, which you can generally consider from these standards to be tested in order to make sure that your app is secured. Adding further to it, we are also talking about performance testing of the mobile app. So it's equally applicable like other testing. Uh, we do have performance testing in place because at any point of time, you can have a load applied on it. You may have volume of people working at the same time or endurance. So there are different types of performance testing and you must conduct them in order to make sure that what if your app becomes popular at some point of time? And what if, you know, 100,000 people are working simultaneously on it? Does it really work? or at least it's responsible on time so that people find it still interesting to use. But if it does not do that, yeah, your product can be in danger in terms of being successful. So if the user installs the app and it does not appear fast enough, it may get deinstalled in favor of another alternative app. Time and resource consumption aspects are important success factors for an app and performance testing is carried out to measure these aspects. Now, performance efficiency needs to be tested on the device itself in addition to interaction with the backend system and the other mobile devices. Performance testing of the whole system should be performed as defined in the test strategy and is not mobile specific because these are quite generic things just like an application and you need to make sure that uh, you have to test for them because if people are not finding it useful, not finding it you know, really quick and fast in order to get that job done, they have alternatives in the market and your app will be opted out. Now the performance test of the app itself should contain chronometry for the most important workflows. For example, uh, some of the examples for the workflows of an online banking app are like login, change address, or bank transfer with PIN and TAN. The tester should then compare these chronometry with the similar apps. So we do have some standards available in order to test them from the performance point of time because these are the generic things when it comes to certain application where the loads are generally seen. For example, login or changing the address, which is the common thing, making a transfer using the pen and all. So, yep, we could definitely take a lot of things beyond this also to consider as per your specific mobile app. Besides chronometry measures, it is important to consider the perceived performance by the user. User experience can have a huge impact and how long the user is willing to wait for certain functions to complete. Now, you, you may talk about, for example, if you, there are banking applications and there are bankers using them, they may have to wait. They will have patience that, okay, we expect sometimes this gets delayed, but we have to patiently wait in, may, in order to make a transfer or withdraw some money. They, they didn't, generally do not expect to be fast, but when it comes to a common user making a chat or probably you know, connecting to someone to make a video conferencing and the app does not respond on time, like on a click, 
then of course the mobile devices have flaws or probably the app has flaws in that and we will look forward to an alternative app which is quick and faster in that context. So putting it all together, we spoke about the stress, security and performance testing for mobile applications. We'll have more, so we'll be covering that in the next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.